I mean, this is Gary. It's uh, Wednesday, September the 2nd, 2020. Uh, I wonder where the summer's gone. I mean, it just time seems to be going by so fast. I want to finish up the book of Joshua today. So if you have your Bible, find Joshua chapter 23. I know last week we were only in chapter 14, but when we get to chapters 15 through 22, it's basically Joshua dividing the land between uh, the, uh, the tribes of Israel. And so when we come to 23, we see Joshua giving his farewell address. Joshua was a man who understood the journey he was on. You know, each journey has a beginning, each journey has a, a middle, and then each journey ultimately has an end. And so Joshua's coming near to the end of it. He's aware of that. And so he wants to give his final address. He wants to encourage the people to continue to follow God with all of their heart. So let's jump into this beginning with verse 23. Joshua's called all the elders together, all the leaders together. And he says this, And you have seen, so if you have firsthand knowledge, you fully understand this, all the Lord your God has done to all the nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he who has been fighting for you. Often in the world we live in, I think it's easy to forget that we're not in battle by ourselves. Remember the promise Jesus made to the disciples, uh, I'll never forsake you, I'll be with you. When we go out to, to fight the, in, in the spiritual wars that we're engaged in, that we're never fighting alone. It is God who is always fighting for us. We're joining him in trying to expand the kingdom of light, the kingdom of his son, the kingdom of God, and overcome the domain of darkness. But we're never in it by ourselves. We just don't go out on our own and do battle. We're following God through all this, just as Israel was following uh, God as they went into this land God had promised them. Verse 4 talks about him apportioning the land to the different tribes. And then, uh, and then verse 5 reminds them that, that there's still going to be some battles, but don't forget God is the one who will be forcing the enemy out. God is the one who is still going to be fighting for you. And then when he gets to verse 6, he says, Be very firm then to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, so that you may not turn from it uh, to the right hand or to the left. Now this is exactly what God said to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. Meditate on my word day and night, completely obey it, be fully committed to me. No one will be able to stand against you. You'll, be, you'll prosper in whatever you do. So that was the promise that was made to Joshua. Joshua is now making that promise to the children of Israel, reminding them of what God has said to them. And so in verse 7 he says, hey look, don't associate with the people here. Don't, don't connect with the, with the pagans. You know, they're going to lead you away from God. And, and your victory is always found in your relationship, your steadfastness. You're being firm in your commitment to God. Verse 8, but you are to cling to the Lord your God as you have done uh, to this day. For the Lord has driven out great and strong nations from before you. And as for you, no man has stood against you to this day. One of your men uh, puts to flight a thousand for the Lord your God is he who fights for you just as he promised. Uh, isn't that amazing? So they've got enemies that are far greater than them, uh, a thousand times more than them, but because of the presence of God in the life of the soldiers of Israel, a thousand would flee from one of their men. That should help us understand that no matter how major our, our, the issues are we're facing, no matter how overwhelming they are, when we are connected to God, when we're walking with God by faith, that nothing is too big for us. Nothing is too strong for us. He goes on and he says in verse 11, So take diligent heed to yourselves to love the Lord your God. And really what he's saying here is watch over your heart. Make sure that you do not allow anything to creep in to, to supersede the place that God should have in your life. We're to seek God first. We're to love God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul. And to be honest with you, it's very easy sometimes to let things interfere with that. Sometimes circumstances, sometimes negative things, sometimes good things. Sometimes we just get tired. Sometimes we're kind of weary. And even sometimes we get a little lazy. We can't let any of that stuff creep in and take place first place in our hearts. God always has to have first place. So he said, watch over your heart. Uh, don't ever go back to where you were. You know, don't cling to those nations because there'll be a snare to you. They'll, they'll trip you up. Satan is always trying to trip us up. Uh, the enemy is always trying to, to draw us away from God. And, and he's so clever and he's so deceptive that it can happen. And, and we wonder, how in the world did we get over here? 
what happened because it's not always ugly. Some things that the enemy uses is attractive to draw us away from God. Verse 14, now be now behold, today I am going the way of all the earth. So he says, I understand I don't have many days left on this earth. And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one word of all the good words which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed. All have been fulfilled for you. Not one of them has failed. Isn't that great? It's, it's important that we remember what God has done and remember how faithful God is to his promises and how faithful he'll be to the future promises he's never failed god does not fail us if god if there's a failure if there's a promise that's not been fulfilled in our life it's because we've drawn away from god we've not stayed connected to christ we're not abiding in him we've allowed uh, we've kind of gone off on our own or we've been or we've drifted away uh, as, as the song sings we're prone to leave the god we love uh, but we have to get make sure our alignment is right when our alignment is right Seeking God first, God first priority in our hearts, He never fails to fulfill a promise. Let me say that one more time. When our heart is where it should be, our relationship with God is all that it should be, God never fails to fulfill His promises. He reminds me in 15 and 16 that if we get out of alignment, that, that God will discipline us, that we can't expect God to, to bless and God to, to show His power uh, when we're living out of our relationship with him so don't follow after the 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 gods of this world the people of this world make sure you're following after the, the one true god when we come to chapter 24 he's gathered all the tribes together now and he's getting to his final farewell part of his address and he, and he recounts their history it's important that we remember our history he goes back and he says hey this is what was going on uh, this is how god started with abraham he goes through egypt he brings them up through their journey through the wilderness up to the present moment and then in verse 14 he says this now therefore fear the lord and serve him in sincerity and truth and put away the gods which your father served beyond the river in egypt and serve the lord reminding us reminding us how important it is that we consciously make a decision to follow christ that we consciously make a decision to follow God, that, that there's, a, there's a, an appropriate fear for God. We don't want to disappoint God. We don't want to let ourselves be deceived. And so we're constantly relying on the Spirit of God to guide us in all truth, to, to give us wisdom that we need to face any and every situation. And, and he says, serve him in sincerity and truth. We don't fake it. We don't come in and, and, and pretend everything's right when it's not. We're, we're people of integrity. We're people who are honest. Then in verse 15, he says, If this is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We have to remember that it is a daily choice, a moment-by-moment -moment choice, who we're going to serve. It's a moment-by-moment -moment choice if we're going to walk in this power of the Holy Spirit or if we're going to walk controlled by the flesh we have to choose deliberately choose intentionally choose who we're going to serve and Joshua is reminding those people of the great freedom of choice that God has given us and he says you know choose if you want to serve the past serve the past if you're if you're going to be caught up in the world that you live in and, and believe all the, the the world and serve the gods of this world then do that but choose who you're going to serve but I want you to know that is, for me and my house, Joshua says, we're going to serve the Lord. I think it's important that we consciously make a choice who we're going to serve. I also think it's very important that, that people know, and especially our families and especially our children know, who we're serving. That we're serving God. That we've committed our hearts fully to serve Him. And we're, and we're not going to turn from the right or from the left. We, they see us studying His Word. They, they hear us praying with them that they see our decisions as we talk to our spouse that are based on what we believe God is leading us to do. It's important that, that, that families, it's important that people know where we stand. We are to be his witnesses wherever we go. Being a witness doesn't mean that I've got to pull out a Bible and, and, and open it up and go through uh, the plan of salvation with every single person. They need to know that my lifestyle, my heart is fully committed to following God. Joshua says, this is where my family is. 
This is where we're going to go. This is where I hope you'll go. If you do this, if you fully follow God, it's going to be well with you. If you choose to follow the gods of your fathers of the past, if you choose to follow the gods in the nations in which you live, it's not going to go well. We need to understand that. I hope that this study in Joshua has been really good and, and been enlightening to you. I've enjoyed it. I hope that you will make that decision today as, that you can say, as for me and my house, we will choose the Lord. As always, thank you for joining me. I'm glad that you're here.